Now that we've finished the detail modeling on the windshield area of the, the front section or the cockpit section, we're going to go ahead and move on and focus on the nose cone area, namely in this kind of front vinch thing and these lights here, the lights here, and then some of the paneling right around it. Now, we're actually going to be doing some real detail modeling this time around, whereas with the windscreen area, Really, we just uh, added in a subsurf modifier and then added in a series of loop cuts to better fit the design and add in the detail. But now we're actually going to be doing some real detail modeling with some intricate pieces, such as right in here and the light in here, then also the this kind of seam coming back. And so we're going to have to do some a little bit more complex modeling, but we'll just do it piece by piece. The first part that I would like to do is this front kind of vent area, and we're going to do it based on this section. Well, actually, most of it will be in this section. So let's just go ahead and actually I'll take that back for a second. Before we jump into edit mode on this section, what I would like to do is separate this out a little bit. And the way that I would like to do that, just, just so that we can narrow our focus, is if we look at our concept, we can see that we've got some seams built into the paneling, namely right here, right here, and maybe even right here. Now, I don't want to just go in and cut a whole bunch of seams in the model and actually make actual seams there. Most of those will just be subtle surface detail, but I would like to add one right here. And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one is as we look at this paneling design, we can see that from uh, this section right through here is, or this section right in here, is basically one flat piece aside from this part. You know, it's roughly the same shape all the way along. Whereas over on this section, we have these two separate panel shapes, this kind of uh, sweeping form that goes in and then up again. And so if we were to keep this as one solid piece, potentially we would need more topology in here than we will in here. And so if we separate these out, that'll give us a better control of our topology and let us kind of control it a little bit better such that we could very easily have more topology on this section without disrupting this section. Now that may not be the case, you know, we may not need to have different amounts, but if we go ahead and set it up like that, it'll help us prepare in advance in the case that we do. So the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode and just immediately I'm going to hit control R and add in a loop cut right here. On this loop cut then I'm going to go ahead and hit S, Y, and zero. Whoops, you'll notice that I immediately went off screen and this is because I happen to be scaling towards my 3D cursor as you can see here as the pivot point. So let's change this over to bounding box center. And now we can hit S, Y, and zero to straighten that up. And then maybe we'll go ahead and rotate it back just a little bit by hitting R, then we can move it a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit S and Z, scale down a little bit along the Z axis, move it down to fit. We could go ahead and manipulate this one just a little bit. Maybe we'll go ahead and hit Control E, edge slide that down such that it's in the middle between here and here. We can maybe scale that down along the Z axis just a little bit. And so that just kind of helps prepare it. We'll also go ahead and scale this one down. And there we go. Okay, so that just helps kind of approximate the mesh a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit our Alt right click on here. And then actually we're just going to select this whole front section right in here and we're going to hit P and separate by selection. Now we can go and hit tab, leave edit mode. Let's select this section and let's go ahead and name this as uh, how about front underscore paneling or front underscore panel will be close enough. And I apologize if I heard a little bump there. I knocked over a small little action figure sitting on my desk, uh, a Yoshi figure to be in exact. And what I want to do is we're going to move on and we're going to just first start by adding in, uh, actually no, before we add in our subsurf modifier, we're going to put together some of these other pieces. Currently, you'll notice I've got this head, the headlights as just kind of this front block here, which that was done completely in error looking back. You know, I should have done two separate pieces like we see here. So let's first go in and correct that. So I'm just going to select this piece and we're just going to hit X and delete vertices. Then I'm going to go in here and these actually need to be the same piece. So let's select this. We're also going to delete it. Well, actually, 
No, we're not going to delete it completely. We're going to delete everything but this top row. So we'll just hit X and delete vertices. And the reason that we're not going to delete the top row is I want to just go ahead and connect these ones here by just moving these over a little bit, kind of approximating them. And then maybe from the side view, we'll select this loop, hit Control E, edge slide, bring this down just a little. We'll bring this down just a little bit. And then what we'll do, actually, let's pull this back out just a little, something like that. And if we look at this, we can kind of see that on this concept, we've got a nice smooth arc down to here. And that's what I would like to go ahead and replicate in this case. So uh, the way that we'll do this, let me just kind of look at this. Okay, what I want to do is let's bring this edge. Hmm. Actually, I'm just thinking about the topology here. Okay, let's first just start by deleting this section right in here, except for these vertices down here. So we're just going to hit X, delete vertices. Then I'm going to select this section, or I'm going to select the top edge. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit E to extrude, bring it down, and then bring it down again, rotate it a bit more, and then one last time down like this. And that's probably what we'll do is we'll use that kind of topology in there. Okay, I think this is going to work well. So let's go ahead and select these areas right in here. We'll hit X, delete those vertices. Then we're going to delete this vertex. Let's go ahead and select each one of these loops, go into front view, and then let's hit S, X, scale in a little along the X axis, bring it in slightly more such that these are nice and even. We'll deselect that top loop by hitting uh, our B and middle click and dragging. Then we'll repeat the process. So we scale in along the X axis, and then we move it in along the X axis to compensate for this where it's actually scaled towards the center right about here. Now you could do this in one step if you just went ahead and positioned the cursor, say right about here, hit period, deselect this top part, and then hit S and X and just scale in like that. You could save a step, or I guess you could, you know, depending on how you look at it, you know, the cursor could be that extra step. Let's smooth this out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to hit Control E and Edge Slide on this loop to just even out this spacing. It's always a good idea to try and keep your topology as evenly spaced as possible when you're kind of working through all the different pieces. Uh, it'll help you create a cleaner mesh from the get-go, but it can also help you, you know, just kind of approximate things and keep nice smooth angles. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let's just attach these now. So what I want to do is let's add in, we're going to, we're kind of following more off this concept. So actually let's do this. Let's select these vertices and we're going to delete them or actually, no, we're just going to grab this vertex. We're going to hit O and go down here and turn on proportional editing connected. So now it'll only affect this mesh and not this one. And I just want to bring these in something like this. Maybe we'll rotate this around just a little bit, bring it in some more, a little bit like this. And by using the proportional editing, it makes this whole process a lot easier. We can also scale it in a little along the Y axis, but it makes it a lot easier to then keep a nice rounded form. There we are, and a little bit more right in here. If we rotate it, we can kind of fix that uh, inset there where it's kind of going down and then back out. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of a nose cone shape. So now we can go ahead and we'll just grab uh, these three edges. And I want these three edges because this edge here is kind of representing this edge right here where we've got this vent coming out. And so this edge kind of continues on down through here. So if I select these three, I'm going to extrude it down. We'll go ahead and extrude each time to an edge right here. I also dis or turned off proportional editing by just hitting O. We can also scale down a little. But if I scale down, I'm going to go ahead and... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Actually, we'll just scale it down just a little bit. We also need to move it over along the x-axis. Then we'll extrude it again to about right there. And move it out along the y-axis from our side view. Rotate this down. Extrude one more time, and we'll fix these vertices in just a moment. 
and then bring this in yet again. Maybe we ought to bring this one out just a bit. And then we'll extrude this down one more time to right about there. We'll bring this in, something like that. And then let's go ahead and extrude this in completely all the way to the center there and then rotate it down. And that looks pretty good. We can go ahead and remove these vertices as well. You may ask, you know, well, why do we do all the blocking in the first place if, you know, a lot of times we're going to end up deleting some of the vertices. And really, the reason that I do it is regardless of whether you end up keeping the, all of the mesh that you add in in the blocking stage really doesn't matter because what it does is it acts as a guide for you to either uh, work the, the new topology into or to create the new topology on top of. So, you know, it really doesn't matter whether you end up using it or not. It's still a very help, helpful stage in the process for getting a nice clean model. Okay, so that kind of controls our topology right in here. Let's go ahead and fill in this space while we're at it. I'm just going to select these vert vertices. Let me hit E to extrude, bring it back to right about here. We'll bring it out a little along the x-axis, bring this out a little bit, this out a little bit. Let's go ahead and connect that edge there, and then we can fill in a face right here. And this edge, you can see we need to even some of this up, so we'll just bring that down. Actually, we need to bring this up, and then this up. That looks good. And then you can see that we're going to need another edge loop in here. And so let's just add in, uh, actually, let's go ahead and hit, uh, yeah, we're going to hit V to rip that apart. And then actually undo that. We're going to select this edge. We're going to hit X and delete the edges so I can add in a new edge loop right here, which then I will use to fill in a face right there, fill in a face right here. And now I can go ahead and add in another edge loop right through to here, maybe deselect these ones and then hit control E edge slide and connect these. And if you look at that, that'll stay nice and smooth. I can go ahead and smooth that out a bit more, smooth that out, that out. I can go ahead and select these, hit W and smooth. Okay. Uh, keeping that just like it is, let's go ahead and select all of it, and we're going to go over the materials. We'll add in our dark green material by clicking Assign, and, and let's see. Okay, we're going to go ahead, and I want to add in the grooves right in here. So on this piece, let's go ahead, and I want to connect these. So we're going to bring this edge over here. We're going to select these four vertices, hit F. We're going to smooth some of these out and then we're going to fill these and that's just by hitting F. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of one of these edge loops. So let's select this one. We're going to hit X, delete the edge loop. We'll go ahead and delete that vertex for the time being because now we can go ahead and slide these along just to kind of smooth them out. We don't need all of these in here. Go ahead and delete that one. And then we'll smooth that one out by hitting Control E. Same thing here, and the same thing there. Just smoothing out the distribution of those. And then what I want to do is we're gonna go ahead and smooth these a little bit. We'll just select these at a time, smooth them. Same thing here. That looks better. We can smooth these ones. Okay. I want to go ahead and extrude these out like this because then I can connect this here. And then I will add in an edge loop right here. I'll go ahead and fill this and fill that. And then I'm not going to do anything with that just yet because we've still got to add in the headlights area, which will probably solve that topology issue for me. But what I want to do is I want to add in these slits right here. And I really like the way this is set up on our concept versus the, the modeling sheets. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add in an edge loop 
Well, actually, no, I'm going to select this loop, this loop, this loop, and this loop, and then deselect those. And starting right here, actually, well, actually, let's just do this. Let's take this. We're going to rotate it around like that. We're going to scale it along the y-axis a little bit. We'll bring it down. We'll go ahead and rotate these around, scale them up just a little. Let's go ahead and bring these over just so that things are consistent and that this edge is following this curve. Move some of these down. Go ahead and select these two vertices. We're gonna hit W and smooth. And we'll just do that a few, few times. Go ahead and grab these, W, smooth. You notice that basically just flipped it on back to line up with that nicely. So that works out really well. We'll push these up a little bit. And then what I wanna do is on this section, up to this section, let's go ahead and delete this right here, just so that you know we don't need to worry about that for the time being. We'll add the depth here in a little bit, but from here down, I'm gonna add in a extra or this section. So I'm just gonna hit E to extrude. I'm gonna take that in, and I might go ahead and go back a little bit further, something like that, and then. To ensure consistency in my mesh, I'm going to go ahead and take this section. I'm going to extrude it up, take it out a little bit. And then we're going to add in another edge loop through here. I'm going to deselect this bottom part, control E, slide just these ones down a little, and then I'm going to fill in a face right there, which even though it's not exact on the concept, it'll fill it, complete it nicely such that it's kind of wrapping around this to give it a little bit more aerodynamics. Now we may change that later, but I do like it, even though it doesn't necessarily match this exactly, I kind of like the way that that is working. Okay, so we'll keep that for the time being. And then what I want to do is we're gonna take these, let's bring them down a little bit. We'll bring these down a little bit. Let's take this one. We're going to take it up. So we're kind of creating a rounded form right in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this edge, deselect all of these. And actually, let's do this. Let's go ahead and select this whole section right in here. And we're just going to... Uh, no, actually, what we'll do is let's select this loop. We're going to hit Shift-D, right-click, bring it back just a little bit. Let's go and extrude it over just a bit, about like that. Select the whole thing, and we're going to hit E to extrude. Take it up. Just add some, some thickness to it. And actually, let's go ahead and bring it down, something like this. And then from the, from the side view, let's select all these vertices. And we'll pull it over. Bring it back a little bit more. Then from here, let's go ahead and we'll just shift D, bring this down, bring it down again. We can bring it in a little bit along the X axis. Same thing with this one. And again, and again, and you know, it doesn't need to be exact, but we're, we're just kind of approximating it to be pretty darn close. And then one last time right to here. We can even them up as we go. Let's go ahead and select all these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the cursor right about here. We hit period, hit S, X, scale towards the cursor. We'll hit Shift L to unselect that one. S, X, bring it in, deselect. S and X. Now I'm going to deselect this portion of them just because it's lining up nicely with this background edge loop. I can kind of use that as a guide. Deselect that part. There we go. Deselect that one, and I'll go ahead and deselect that, and then I'll hit X and delete vertices for this one because it's not needed. It's completely hidden. 
we can go ahead and maybe maybe I'll select all of these and then I'm gonna deselect the front loops by just alt shift right clicking on them and since there's the poles at the corner uh, it will well they're not really poles but they're not continuous uh, it will or actually yeah they are poles they're three-sided poles uh, and I'll actually discontinue loop there so I can then just deselect them and then I'm just going to bring these back and up a little bit something like that then let's go and hit control L and H to hide them all let's go in here and select this and what I want to do is I just want to bring it down further to add more depth to it something like that ought to be good then let's go ahead and hit alt H to unhide those pieces um, and I notice that the bottom one isn't far enough so let's go ahead and shift D to duplicate that again we'll add in just one more section bringing in a little along the x-axis and that will create those front that kind of front grill and you can see our this part is coming through here a little bit so let's go ahead and bring that in we're gonna pull that up deselect this portion bring these in deselect that bring that in just to kind of even that up make sure that nothing's intersecting like it was okay that looks pretty good just so that we can see some more consistent or difference in here let's go ahead and select this and then hit control I to inverse our selection and we're just gonna go ahead and give these a dark gray so we can see some good variety in there and before we go any further let's go ahead and add in our subsurf modifier so we'll just toggle down our mirror we'll go to add modifier subdivision surface toggle up to two optimal display select everything W and shade smooth now on these ones let's see yeah I need to delete the faces on those on the sides or it's just gonna kind of cause me some problems so I'm just gonna select all those and I don't really care if I have any other vertices selected in here as long as I don't have any faces and so I can just kind of delete or deselect some of the faces that are connecting or delete some of the deselect some of the vertices that are making up faces and then I have got all these select I'll just hit X and delete faces only and it won't hurt anything else I can see I've got some black areas in here so I'll just select everything hit control in and then it looks like I've got some interior faces right in here or never mind no I don't I was just a weird smoothing issue that I was seeing see I've got a problem right there so I'll take that back okay let's go and add in some sharpness to this so I'm gonna hit control R add in a loop right there although what I'm gonna do let's go ahead and remove this bottom section let's just hit X and delete faces uh, we don't really care if we can see through that at least at the moment or actually you know what just to be safe let's go and keep this but let's just hit Y to separate it and then we'll hit comma to scale away from the individual center and let's just scale this up slightly so that we're not going to be uh, having any duplicate vertices because now I can go ahead and add in an edge loop here so for, and in fact for design practice purposes I'm going to go ahead and add in an edge loop right here and then I'm going to bring in these edges right here I'm going to bring those over to right there so that the two sharp corners or this sharp corner lines up with this one there and maybe we'll bring these up just a little bit something like that let's go ahead and I'm gonna select all of these and then I'm going to deselect all the front loops again so I'm shift alt right clicking on them then I'm gonna hit X and delete faces save me some extra faces and what I want to do is go down here and I'm gonna select the back loop back bottom loop of each one of these now this can be a little bit cumbersome but it shouldn't be too difficult 
just because if you know if I position my view right, then I can very clearly see what's what. And I believe that would be all of them, and it is. So now I'm just going to grab these, and I'm just going to pull them back like this. And what that'll do is just kind of help close that off just a little bit more. Maybe I won't go quite so far. Okay, and then I'm also going to add in another edge loop on each side, or just like this, to sharpen that up. So that's just control R, select it, left click, and slide down. Okay, that works. Now I want to go ahead and add in, first I'm going to pull this up just a little bit more, and then I want to go ahead and select this entire interior section. Let's go ahead and select everything that's a dark material, select, and we're just going to hit H to hide it, and then I want to select this interior surface and there and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude right click hit alt s to scale this in and then you'll notice that I need to fix these two edges here so I'll select this edge I'm gonna hit control E edge slide just bring that down and then I'll do the same thing over here and that will fix that quite easily and nicely Okay, so the reason that I did that is now I can make this really sharp, really easy. I can also take this entire edge, control E, edge slide, bring that right up very nice and easily. Okay, you'll notice this bottom one, if I select this, this bottom one needs to go like that some. And it seems that this top loop needs to go up. There we go. And maybe I'll just pull that up just a little bit like that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to add in another loop right up to here. Let's go ahead and do the headlights now. So on here, we've got, it's gonna come out from right in here. Uh, it's gonna go to just about the center. So let's first add in another loop right up to here so that I have a single face loop right around here just in case. I always like to um, surround each section with a solid face no matter what I do. Uh, I'm also going to, so that this is consistent down through here, I'm just going to select these two and hit W and merge at center. So now this will create a loop around like that. And I can go ahead, I'm going to delete these faces right here. And I will delete this face right here because I'll go ahead and bring this up probably. Let's go and select this edge loop. I'm just going to hit X, delete edge loop for the time being. Let's go ahead and we'll delete that vertex. And actually, let's just select these four. We're going to hit F to fill a face. Then we'll bring that down. And that will form the side of our lights. So maybe, in fact, if we just... Well, no, that's not going to be quite good enough. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and hit V to split that. I'm going to select this one, pull it back a little bit more, bring it back through here, and then I'm going to, let's see, basically I want to grab this section here, but I don't want that split like that, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit V, rip that, and then I'm going to rip that again, uh, just so that this is separate, so I can add another edge loop here, and then I'm going to merge these two vertices, and I'll merge these two vertices. That will also make that nice and sharp right here. Deselect that vertex, then I'll slide these back a little. Go ahead and grab these two, I'll hit Control-E, slide these down. 
bring that up, bring these over a little bit. And that's starting to form the shape that I want. Just since this is throwing me off, I'm going to select this and assign the green. Save the file. Bring this over. And that starts to look pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and select this whole loop. I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, S to scale in. Or actually, uh, let's just hit Alt S. We'll push it in along the normals. Something like that. Maybe not quite so much. About like that. We'll add in another edge loop right up to the edge, like so. Let's grab this edge. We're going to bring it over. And then from the front view again, let's go ahead and grab these edges. We're going to rotate around the z-axis like that so that they're nice and angled. Same thing here. Deselecting those vertices. Rotate that around the z-axis, so that's just hitting R and then Z. We'll rotate this one just a bit as well. That just help, helps keep the angles a little more parallel to the view, which will give us a cleaner mesh or cleaner distortions or shapes in our mesh anyway. Okay, now what I can do is I'm going to select this in inner loop. I'm going to hit Shift D, right click. I'm going to scale up just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit P and separate by selection. I'll select it. I'm going to call this uh, geo underscore uh, light front um, main. And the reason that is I'm doing geo because it's a mesh, it's a light, so that I know, you know, I can categorize all the lights, and then it's on the front, and it's going to be the main headlights, and then these ones will be basically the sublights. Okay, let's go in here. I'm going to select these four faces, hit F, or vertices, hit F, and then I can see I've got five more in there. I'll select these two. I'm going to hit W, subdivide, select these, hit F, select these, hit F, gives me all those. Now I can go and hit Control R, add in two edge loops there. I'm going to hit Alt S, scale out along the normals. Then I'm going to hit W and smooth a few times. Maybe scale it up. Then I'll select everything, pull it back along the Y axis, maybe scale up a little bit. This can come back in. This will come back through here. And this is just going to be the, the light cap, basically. Okay, let's go ahead and give this our yellow color. So I'm just going to remove everything but the yellow from this. And then currently, that really looks a little bit too much like an insect eye. So what I want to do, I'm going to select this section. I'm going to select this loop, deselect those. And I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to pull it down. And this one here. Something a little bit more like that. Select these, deselect those, pull that in. And then I'm going to grab these bottom ones, pull them down. Go in here, grab these, that's a little bit closer to what I want, but not quite, so I'm going to tweak it just a little bit more, I won't take up too much time doing this, bring this over, bring that over to there, this over to there. I'm going to go and add in another edge loop right here just to keep things nice and even. 
go ahead and hit shift space, maximize my view just for a moment while I'm doing this. If I hit alt S, I can scale that out along the normals, help kind of even it up. Okay, that starts to look pretty good. I want to go ahead and bring these out a little bit closer to the edge there. These out a little bit closer. Bring these down just to help match the final shape that I've got. Okay, that'll be pretty good for now. Uh, we're not going to model the interior of the lights just yet. We will actually do those, don't fret. Um, but we're not going to do it just yet. I'm going to do a, you know, towards the end of this training series, we'll do a section on modeling some of the smaller details. Or maybe we'll do it here in the front. You know, we'll just kind of see how things go as we're working through this. But for the time being, I wanna move on to some of the other detailing in here. So first, let's add in uh, this crease right through here. So I'm gonna add in another loop right up to this edge, make that nice and sharp, and almost immediately, you can see some things kinda of come together on this. I'm gonna select, say, these edges in here. I'm gonna hit W and uh, smooth a few times on here. Bring those down. Bring this around to there. And I want to go ahead and work on this seam. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to hit Control E, edge slide. Bring those over a little bit. Bring this over a little bit. And I'm going to select uh, this, these two faces. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, these two faces. I'm going to hit X and delete faces. I'm going to go into vertex mode. Pull this down to about there. Pull that down to about there. Kind of rotate these around a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and extrude this vertex up. I'm going to fill in a face here and a face right here. Bring that over there and around over. Smooth this out, okay? And then what I want to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to pull it out to the edge of where I want this to be, right in there. I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, first, I'm going to add in another edge loop right here, down to the base, maybe a little bit lower. And then I'm going to grab this, these two vertices, pull them down to about there and back a little bit. Something about like that I think will work pretty well. We can kind of accent this a little better by pulling this in slightly, that in just slightly. Let's add in another edge loop right along to the back right there. And another one along the top right to there. We'll add in another one right up there at that edge. And then we'll smooth these out back here in just a little bit, but I want to go ahead and select these and these, I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, scale it down, pull it in just a little bit, and then I'll hit, uh, actually I want to smooth these out because this ought to be one continuous surface back through here, and so I'm going to go ahead and select this vertex, I'm going to hit X, delete vertices, and then I'm going to go ahead and select this edge, I'm going to hit W and subdivide, I'm going to do the same thing down here. Except on this one, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to use my knife tool by holding down K and then left click and dragging right across through there. And then what I'll do is I'm going to select this, bring it down just a little bit. I'm going to select this vertex, then this one. I'm going to hit W and merge at last so that it merges right there. And then I'll do the same thing on this, <clears throat> excuse me, on this side. So I'll select this one, then this one, then W, merge at last. And then what I want to do is we're going to hit control tab, go into face mode. We're going to select these two faces. We're going to hit F to fill in a face. And then I'm going to go down here. I'm going to select this vertex. I'm going to select this one, hit W, merge at last. And then over here, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to select these two faces, hit F, and then we'll add in another loop right here 
hit control tab, go into vertex mode, select this one, move that over a little bit such that it forms a diamond shape, and then hit F to fill that. And so that's a little tip or trick right there. Using diamond shaped quads, we can actually get uh, add in extra topology without increasing it all the way. Uh, but one thing I will say is that it works best on flat areas. So, you know, you don't generally want to do these kinds of uh, tricks on more organic or kind of formed areas. Flat areas definitely work best. Uh, that's not to say that you can't do it, but you want to use it a little bit more carefully. Uh, if you've watched some of my other topology videos, you'll definitely have seen me use the same technique. Uh, it can be used in a lot of different places. It can also be used for doing things like wrinkles in clothing and such. But in today's study, you know, it works real well for kind of controlling some stuff like this. So now I want to go ahead and select this loop. We're going to hit E to extrude, and we're just going to take it all the way back like this somewhere in there, and then we'll add in another edge loop right up to this edge, something like that, to make that nice and sharp. Now I wanna go ahead and smooth this out over here before we're done, so let's go ahead and grab, say, these two vertices, we'll hit W and smooth a few times, uh, then we'll slide that up about like that. Let's go ahead and slide this one over here. Now we can smooth this out a little bit more. Uh, we're not gonna do this one too much, just a little bit like that. Maybe go to our side view, pull this in just a bit, and then I wanna smooth this way up and this one down. So you'll notice that, you know, we do, oops, here we go. So we do a little bit, then more, and then even more to get a real nice smooth paneling. If we bring this down a little bit here, and then we'll bring these down to there, Actually, we'll keep those right about there. But we can bring those panels over, bring this over a little bit. Maybe we can go ahead and select this, hit Control E, edge slide, slide it down. Slide this down just a little bit. Slide this a little bit more like that. And this one, if we look from another angle, let's go ahead and bring these ones out along the x-axis there, and it comes over here, bring that out along the x-axis. And that looks pretty darn good. Okay, uh, I like this edge coming through here. Maybe we'll go ahead and grab these. We'll smooth them a bit more. And let's see, any final touches? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add in another edge loop right up to here. And then I'm gonna bring that over a little bit so that we've got that good shape right there. I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit control E, edge slide that just a little bit. I'm going to select these, control E, bring those down to there. Keep some nice good angles on here. We'll take that vertex, smooth it down to about there, bring it out just a little bit. Same thing with this one, just keeping nice smooth angles all throughout. Uh, let's see. Any last minute things? Oh, we need to add depth in here. So I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna hit E to extrude, take it in along the x-axis right there. I'll deselect all of these. I'm gonna go in here, take it down about like that. Maybe rotate around just a little bit, somewhere in there. Let's add in another loop, sharpen that up. Let's go in here, let's select these vertices. We're gonna take them down a little along the y-axis, a little bit along the or z-axis then the x-axis bring them down just a titch take these ones down as well actually we'll just grab this whole edge and bring it down slightly we can go ahead and pull out this one loop here make sure it's consistent so 
Same thing, we'll pull. Actually, let's just deselect that half and then we'll pull this side out a little bit. We'll grab these ones, pull them out just a little bit. Let's select this and we're going to deselect everything down to there. I'll rotate this around the z-axis just a little bit and then I'll pull it in just a little bit along the x-axis there. And then you'll notice that we've got a little discrepancy there. So we'll select this vertex, we'll hit W, smooth, and that will just kind of smooth that right out. Okay, uh, this starts to look pretty good. Um, I would like to do a little bit more right in here. Uh, let's see, let's think how we can do this just real quickly. If we hit shift space to un unmaximize our view, we can look at this. Um, what I'm going to do, let's select, say, this loop and that loop. We'll deselect that one. I'm going to deselect these vertices, those vertices, these two, and these ones. I'm going to hit Shift D, right click, S, X, and or let's see, let's just straighten this up just a little bit along the x-axis. We'll take it over along the x a bit. Or actually, let's just take it over along the x a little bit like that, down a little, and let's just extrude it out along the z to about right there. We'll pull it up a little bit. Let's add in edge loop right over like that. Another one over like that. Let's go in here, and I want to select these loops like that and then these two vertices here and here and then we're going to extrude that up oops I've got some extra vertices selected in here we'll extrude that up about like that we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom it's a little difficult to select at times. And then we're going to extrude it down like that. And go ahead and hit X, delete the faces. Pull this down a little bit like that. Select this loop, deselect that vertex, pull it up just a little and a little bit more maybe and rotate it slightly. Select these. And there we go. Just kind of helps to add in just a little extra piece of trim, kind of. Uh, give it a little bit extra effect. And then maybe we could even go ahead. Let's add another loop right down the center here. We'll hit Alt S to scale it up just a bit. And then I'm going to go ahead. Let's select this panel only. Hit Shift H to hide everything else. I'm going to go in here, select this. Hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S to scale it down. Then you notice that we have these intersecting loops here, so I'll select them, hit Control E, edge slide, excuse me, and then actually just slide that one down just a little bit. And then we can go ahead and we'll just pull that up a little. And then we can go ahead and Add in another loop right down like that. Alt H, unhide everything. And we're going to select this loop, this loop, deselect these, select this, Alt right, Alt Shift right click, deselect that vertex, deselect that loop actually. And we're going to hit Shift Space, or excuse me, not Shift Space, sh or yeah, Shift Space, unmaximize our view. We're going to assign the dark gray to this. Click Assign, Alt H to unhide, or to hide, unhide everything else. Let's also go in and we're going to hit Control Tab, go into face mode. I'm going to select this face loop. We're going to click Assign on that. And then I want to add in Control Tab, go back to vertex mode. We're going to add in one more loop right through here, about like that. I like this sharp edge that we're getting here anyway. And then I'm going to select these vertices and I'm going to pull them down 
about like that, maybe a little bit further. And then this one, pull that down just a little bit to even it out. And we're going to add in one more edge loop. Actually, no, I don't like that last one. About like that. Okay, and now we'll probably do a little bit more work with that as far as, you know, what exactly that is, although we can sharpen it up a little bit like that. But it kind of helps add one more little bit of effect there. And I think we're going to call it quits for this section. We're starting to get a little bit long. I don't want to drag on too much, uh, but it's looking pretty good. It's definitely coming along. We've got a long ways to go, but making good progress. Hi, and welcome back. In the previous video, we were working on the nose cone area of our vehicle here, and it started getting a little long, so we had to take a break, and we're gonna come back and finish it off now, and then we'll be moving on to the other parts of the front here. And what I wanna do first to kind of finish off this section, it'll be fairly quick and short, is we're gonna do this front little piece right here, and then also this green paneling underneath. Now, we're not gonna be doing any of this this gray kind of engine area or the bottom side of the vehicle just yet. We're going to leave that for the next section. And then we also might do a little bit of cleanup work. Uh, notice a couple things in here, like this angle is off. It doesn't match the angle on the windshield. So we might do a little bit of cleanup work on that. To get started, what I want to do is we're just going to select this part of our model, the nose area. We're going to hit tab to go into edit mode. And then I basically just want to extrude this down and then back through here, and then we will add in the lights area, kind of like we did on this part here. So this will be fairly easy. We just need to be aware that we're gonna connect it right in here. So let's first just take these vertices. I'm just gonna hit B, uh, left click and drag, and I'm just gonna hit X and delete these vertices. Because you'll notice that this part here, this kind of, I guess these are kind of the, the fog lights or you know the other lights right here on the front, are starting from right about in here. So I wanna go ahead and we're just gonna take this area and we're also going to hold down shift and right click and select these ones here. Cause I'm gonna hit E to extrude. Then I'm going to immediately right click to cancel my movement, but I've still got my extrusion. So then I can just hit S and scale this in just a little bit. And the reason that I wanna scale it is I want to bring it in horizontally along the X axis. And so then I can actually just go and hit G and X and bring it in a little bit further since the scaling doesn't bring it in quite far enough. And also, whenever you change your views, if you happen to lose track of your model, so you're way over here, you can just hit numpad dot or numpad period, and that will take you right to your active selection. So now I can go ahead and move this down just a little bit, and then I'll hit E to extrude again, pull it down like this, and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate it around just a little bit like this, and then we're going to hit S, Z, and zero just to scale those down to be perfectly straight, and then I'll hit enter. And then I can go ahead and rotate those back. And the reason that I rotated them in the first place was just to kind of keep this angle a little better than I would have if I were to uh, scale those down from the starting. Now you'll notice that we've got uh, a lot of intersection going on right here, which isn't a problem because we're going to be uh, manipulating this section as well, but just so that it's not in the way, let's go and hit tab to leave edit mode. We'll select this bottom part, hit tab to enter edit mode, and let's just control left click and drag or box select to select that area. And accidentally I hit control left click, which extrudes all of my active selection, which actually shows I had a lot more selected, so I actually need to unselect everything, and then hit control left click and drag around that to create a lasso selection, and then I'll hit X and delete vertices. And we'll just pull those back. And then I can also go ahead, maybe move these down just to about right there so that they're kind of out of the way of where then this is going to be. So now I can go back in edit mode here and I'm gonna extrude this down one more time because I'm gonna need a sharp edge around here. And I also wanna make sure I have a perimeter face loop, which if, if we hit control tab, go into face mode, you can see that we can select this loop. I want this going around the, the lights here so that you know all all detail kind of has a perimeter loop around it it's a good topology rule to try and follow keeps things nice and clean and also allows you to get your detail a lot easier now i'm going to go ahead and select this i'm going to hit Control e 
and slide it back a little bit, just enough to kind of match the distance here, such that the distance between these two vertices and say these two vertices is about the same. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing maybe here. Actually, these ones, I could go ahead and select, say, all of these here. And I'll hit Control E, Edge Slide, bring them over a bit more so I can actually get a sharper edge there. And I might just go ahead and bring that over just a little bit. And maybe I will slide these all through here up to this point where the angle changes. Hit Control E, Edge Slide, bring those over. And you notice I'm keeping this angle here because I, or excuse me, this one, because I've got that sharp edge there that I like that's coming down through here. But this surface, I want to be nice and sharp. Same thing, I want to go ahead and add in another edge loop right here to sharpen this up. And I'm just going to bring it right up to that edge. And I'm going to hit Control E again, or Control R to add another edge loop right down to that edge. And what that does is almost kind of gives me a weld line where you see how these are kind of merge together and you could even accent that even more by adding another edge loop and maybe hitting alt s to scale along the normals and bringing it out like that if you wanted uh, little details that you can add real easily that do help a lot with the general detailing uh, not required and and for now we're going to go ahead and remove that edge loop by hitting x and delete edge loop just for the time being you know we can add those in later if we want for those kinds of details but for the time being while we're still kind of getting our foundation laid down we're going to leave them be. Now I'm going to move these over a little bit more just to match with this angle a little more just so that we don't have this, you know, these are going straight down and then all of a sudden it was uh, sliding over to the left there. We're going to keep it nice and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and take this edge here and I'm just going to hit E to extrude. I'm going to right click because I don't want to move along the average normal there. And then I'm just going to move it out to here about the corner of this light. Go out. Maybe I'll take it out along the x-axis. I would also like to make this angle straight here. So I'm going to take these vertices, deselect that one behind it, and I'm going to take them out along the x-axis until this angle is fairly straight or kind of bowed out a little bit even. You know, it just kind of depends on what you want. I'll hit 3 to go back to side view, numpad 3. And then what I need to do is add in another edge loop through here. Maybe I can add it right about in the center here. And then I will just go ahead and deselect these ones back there. And I'll hit Control E, slide these back down a little bit. And then I can select these by shift right clicking on them, select these two, hit F to fill that face. I'll hit Shift Space to unmaximize my view. I'm going to go back in and assign the green material to this. So I'll just click Assign, hit 3 to go back to side view, hit Shift Space to maximize my view again. And then what I want to do is to match these angles here. So I'm first going to hit Control R, add in an edge loop, bring it right up to there, because then I can just fill in a face like this. And then I'm going to hit Control R again, add another edge loop. I'm going to take it all the way up to about there, and then I'm going to bring it in along the x-axis. And that will basically match that angle. And so then I can fill that face. And then I will add in one more edge loop right up to there, and fill in that, and fill in that. And so that's just selecting them, hitting F, and that will fill in the face. Now you'll notice that we've got to move these out a little bit to match the angle so that our faces aren't distorted. So I just select them, hit G and X to move it out along the x-axis. And now that looks really nice and clean. And so what I'll do now is I'm just going to hit Control Tab, go into face mode. I'm going to select this face, this face, this face. And then I can either bring these all the way into the center, or maybe I think I'll just stop right here so there'll be a little bit of green metal here in the center before we switch over to our light. And so now I'll just hit E to extrude, right click, I'm going to hit W and sk smooth, and that will basically just kind of bring them in a little bit on all axes, and then I'll hit E to extrude, right click, I'm going to hit Alt S to scale it down such that, you know, it pushes away from it equally in all directions, like this. And then I'm going to hit E to extrude again, right click, W, and smooth. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to hit Alt S, bring it back out in this direction like that. And that will give me those lights really nice and easily. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go into wireframe mode, zoom in real close here, and then I'm going to shift Alt right click on that loop. Or actually, I guess that's not the right one. Instead, I want that one there. So I select all the perimeters around the light and I'm going to go in, I'm going to select the yellow one. And since that's the current 
light color, but I want an orange one too. So I'm going to hit plus, add a new channel, and then I'll hit the 8 to create a new user or a new material from this user. Click that, and now I'll go ahead and name this orange. And we'll rename all of these, you know, to be appropriate lights and things like that later on. But for the time being, you know, I just want the basic colors. And I'm going to change this over to a nice kind of orangish red, you know, like a like a tail light, something like that. And then I'll click Assign, and that will put that in. So now you notice it's really nice and clean. It's really sharp. And maybe I'll go ahead and hit Control Tab, go back to vertex mode. I can hit Shift Space to maximize my view again. I'm going to add in another edge loop by hitting Control R and slide it up about like that. And what that does is just adds a little extra nice shape to this, such that it's kind of flat along the top, and then it's got a nice arc on the bottom to give me a really nice shape. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So right now it might be a little too square, so maybe I'll select these areas and these areas. And I might have to select some of those in wireframe mode to get the ones back behind. And then I'm just going to, from the side view, pull them out a little bit like this, you know, matching my angles as best I can. And then I'll go back in, select these ones as well. Again, from the side view, pull them out, just so that this curve is a little bit smoother and maybe feels a little bit more aerodynamic. Maybe I'll pull this one out a bit more. And then this one out a bit more. I can scale this up a little bit to kind of smooth out the angles and that looks pretty good. Now these are a bit, I've got some issues going on here so I'm going to go ahead and select these three vertices. I'm just going to hit W and smooth a few times. A good indication of when you've got some surface issues, it, particularly on something like this where we want really smooth surfaces, is when you see these kind of um, overlaps of what is actually the subsurfed mesh with the actual mesh. So you can see these vertices are going behind the surface. And so I don't have a very smooth surface. And you'll notice like this, if I roll around to this angle, we've got these two ver these vertices, which are on either side of here, are actually lower than this one here. So if I just grab these, I can pull that out there. And you'll notice that kind of overlap starts to go away, giving me a smoother surface. And so same thing here, I might go ahead and select these, go down here, pull them down a little bit to get a nice smooth arc. Maybe I'll select these ones as well, pull them down, select these, pull it down. And so that just helps to keep a really nice clean surface. And now while you may not notice it immediately from the modeling view, you will start to notice those kinds of things if you were to go in and say add a really nice car paint shader and start rendering it those differences in the uh, in the surface level are actually going to have a pretty big effect and you're going to see some pretty major differences. Now one thing I do want to do is go ahead and select these areas right in here and I'm going to hit E to extrude, right click, Alt S to bring them in and then I want to, I've already got that one there so I'm going to add another edge loop, slide it out Now that looks, oh, okay, yeah, so that's actually looking good. That's kind of what I want. I just wanted to add in a little bit more detail in here. Maybe I'll bring these in a bit further. Something about like that. I could add in another edge loop up through there. And so that just kind of helps frame the lights a bit more rather than just kind of looking a bit lumpy. And I've got an extra edge loop in there that I can just select, hit X, delete those vertices. I really don't need those. Maybe I can go ahead and pull these back along the y-axis just a little bit. Oh, I might want to be sure to select both of them. There we go. Just kind of smooth those out. These ones back here, I might go ahead and select these, pull them in this way. And then I've got this loop back in there. Okay, there we go. Just helps add that little bit of extra detail to really finish it off. And, you know, I could go ahead and and maybe select these loops and go ahead and give them a, a dark gray material. So click Assign, and that again will help add that extra bit of framing. You know, kind of like most lights have on regular cars, have a metal 
metal or metallic framing around them. It's the same kind of thing that we want to do on here. So now let's go ahead and I want to polish this off. So the way that I want to do that is I want to merge these right into here. And then I also want to add in the bottom on this. So let's first go ahead and do the bottom. That's going to be the easy part. And so I'm just going to select these vertices just like that. Make sure I've got them all. Hit numpad period to scale to my selection. I'm going to hit E to extrude. Bring it down like this. Extrude one more time. And the reason that I do that is now I've got a quad that I can make right here, which will also direct my edge flow down through here because I'm just going to extrude these back and then merge faces there. So I'll select these again and I'm going to extrude back to here and to here. About like that. Maybe I'll go ahead and scale these out from the x-axis, bring them out a little bit. So I hit, hit S to scale it, left click, and I hit G and X to bring it out a little bit further so I can recorrect this angle. And I'll go ahead and select this and this. Hit F to fill a face. So now you'll notice that I've got this angle going right on back. I do the same thing here. And I'll go ahead and select all these vertices, reassign my green material. And maybe I could select this edge, deselect that vertex, hit Control E, edge slide, bring it right up to the edge there. Maybe I'll kind of, I can select this vertex, hit W and smooth a couple times will help average out that angle. And then uh, I'm not going to do anything else past here because that'll partially be depend on how I go ahead and merge this area. Um, but I want to go ahead and filter in these to here. So what I'm going to first do is just select this vertex and this vertex and hit F to fill that face because I want this or fill the edge because I want this to be one continuous line. And so now I can kind of define how, actually, you know what? I can define how this is all going to connect based on that vertex. But I'm first just going to select this one, move it up a little bit. Then I'm going to select these two and I'm just going to fill an edge right there. And that will actually help fill it or connect it even better. So I'll just maximize my view by hitting shift space so you can better see what I'm doing. And maybe I can just first select these four, three, four vertices, hit F to fill a face there. But I notice it can't find a nice quad from concave set of vertices. So what you need to do is select this one, hit W, smooth. That will pull it back just a little bit towards this vertex. And now we have a nice surface curved surface here that then will fill perfectly like that. I can do the same thing with this one. So I'll select those, hit F, fill in that face. Maybe I'll bring that one back over a little bit. And now you can see that fits together very, very nicely. And yet we still have this surface right in here, which if we wanted to, we could add in an edge there, or we could go ahead and separate this out a bit more and add in an edge down through here if we wanted. But for the time being, I think this will work pretty well to merge that together. Okay, now I'm noticing a little bit of discrepancy here. So I'm just going to go and select these two. I'm going to hit W, smooth, select that one and that one. Maybe slide that one back. Just kind of noticing some artifacts on the surface. And I think what I'll do is, let's see, if we go hit one to go into front view, zoom in here. This angle looks pretty nice right here, but on the bottom, uh, actually that doesn't look so bad. Okay, I think that will be fine. And so what I want to go ahead and do now is we're going to do this on the next section. Uh, let's see. So yeah, I think that will be, be fine for now. So the next part, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit more detail work right in here. And then we're also going to be doing uh, the bottom section here. So I'll go ahead and call it quits for the time being and see you on the next part.